Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science. This is Module 5, Earth Processes. And we're going to be looking in this video at black smokers. So what we want you to be able to do is to look at some of the evidence for the origin of organic molecules. And we looked previously at the um, Uri Miller experiment. This time we want to look at some of the communities associated with black smokers. The black smokers is a term that's used to define some of the phenomena that happen at deep sea vents. And so we'll look at those to make sure that you can describe those to have a look at some of the conditions around a black smoker that may be conducive to life and what we'll do is we'll get you to evaluate whether or not you think this could be one of the potential origins for life uh, on Earth, certainly for the origin of organic molecules. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to look at deep sea vents. Now, deep sea vents are places particularly associated with mid-ocean ridges where we've got two divergent boundaries and uh, a constructive boundary happening. So new crust is being formed. Material um, is heated from below the surface and rises up and we get this formation of new crust. One of the important things for us to be aware of is that in the deep sea vents, it's very deep, it's very dark and it's very cold. Now these are all, I guess, characteristics that we would not associate with life, certainly the first life on earth. But what we do know is that at these uh, deep sea vents, we have uh, some, some very salty seawater that is seeping into the cracks in the newly formed crust. Now what that'll do is it'll, it'll percolate its way around through this, this crust, getting heated as it goes. And eventually, um, what it will do is to start to dissolve some of the minerals that are part of that newly formed crust, especially as the temperature heats up. One of the general rules that we have is that a lot of substances become more soluble at higher temperatures. And so therefore, this superheated hydrothermal fluid that's moving through the crust is absorbing more and more minerals uh, into, into that um, solution uh, as it moves. Now, the heat is actually going to eventually drive that back up out. And as it emerges through the crust, it's going to emerge through some sort of event. And that's going to give us a couple of important things. The most important thing is that this really hot water, hot steam if you like, is actually going to hit super cold seawater. And what that's going to do is it's going to form a precipitate. Now precipitate is a chemistry word and it's associated with the formation of solid material um, from a solution. So it's when solids that can't um, dissolve anymore um, come out. They precipitate out of the solution. Now, depending on the composition of the precipitates, we can have black smokers or white smokers. So black smokers tend to be dominated by iron sulfides, whereas white smokers tend to be more calcium, barium, um, silicate, that type of thing. Um, either way, what this does is this puts a large amount of um, chemical material, chemical matter, into um, this region around these um, uh, deep sea vents. And that's something that we've also found has been associated with a certain type of life. Up until the mid 1970s, we felt that all food chains were based on photosynthesis. So there had to be an autotroph, there had to be a, a, a particular form of life that was able to convert the energy from sunlight into organic molecules. And they were the start of each of the food chains and they were actually what all of our uh, communities, all our ecosystems were based on. But then we discovered in these deep, um, in, in the Pacific Ocean actually, um, some communities associated with these deep sea vents. Now that couldn't be a photosynthetic organism because it just wasn't any light. There was no light penetrating to that depth. So it couldn't have been a photosynthetic. In fact, what we have was a chemosynthetic community. And I do say community because there are a large number of different types of organisms that interact in the same sort of way that we find in other uh, ecosystems, other groups of organisms with um, some sort of uh, autotroph at the base. So here we had particular types of organisms that were able to 
generate organic molecules, but they weren't using sunlight or in any other form of light to do that. They were actually doing it through chemical reactions. Specifically, uh, the sulfurs that were being released and methane gas, uh, sources of important chemicals that allowed processes to occur, oxidation reduction uh, reactions specifically, um, which were happening that allowed the conversion of some of these inorganic chemicals, inorganic substances, into the important organic molecules that we see. One of the things that we do know about these black smoker communities is they don't last forever. So the, the material that's being discharged uh, at a black smoker doesn't happen indefinitely. And so um, scientists who've studied these particular types of communities have found that they're very fast growing. The community diversifies and grows very, very quickly. And it's probably um, been a response to these very short lived opportunities that they have. Um, to take advantage of these chemosynthetic bacteria that are at the start of each of these food chains and to be able to expand into these uh, communities of organisms very, very quickly. As I mentioned, um, because now we're not talking about plants, we're not talking about autotrophs in the sense of uh, photosynthetic autotrophs, what we're now talking about are organisms that are able to use these chemicals and through a series of chemical reactions can then generate organic compounds. And so we find that it's the bacteria that are really at the base of all of these food chains in these kinds of environments. And they tend to be extremophiles, uh, thermophiles, thermo meaning heat and phile meaning uh, love, lovers. Um, and or extremophiles, because we're talking about really high temperatures here, temperatures that are going to be um, just too high for most organisms to uh, survive, and yet these organisms can survive. And we find we can, we can draw food chains to represent the relationships between the different organisms that are part of these black smoker communities. So bacteria would be the start of each of these food chains. Your first order consumers would be your zooplankton or your shrimps, uh, maybe small types of crabs. Uh, larger crabs and fish would form the second orders. And then maybe fish, larger fish, uh, octopus, might form the uh, third order in these sorts of food chains that we find around these different types of communities. We also see forms of symbiosis, which is organisms living together to mutual, usually to mutual benefit. Sometimes um, one doesn't particularly gain or lose, and sometimes one actually has a kind of negative experience out of the relationship. But usually we find symbiotic relationships have some sort of benefit to, to both the organisms to, that are involved. And usually we talk about symbiosis um, between different species of organisms, so not between two individuals of the same species. So we find, for example, tube worms are very good at creating this sort of symbiotic relationship with bacteria. They'll take the bacteria in, the bacteria will do what they do, create those uh, important organic compounds and presumably get some sort of level of protection by being within um, the tube worms themselves. The chemistry associated with the uh, conversion of carbon dioxide of these high sulfur, uh, sulfur content black smokers um, hydrogen sulfide, uh, iron sulfides, uh, into carbohydrates and or uh, water and or sulfuric acid or sulfur uh, are quite complex and they do vary depending on the type of organisms that are present. But what we do find is that this is a potential source of organic molecules from inorganic substances. So we do find that either through a symbiotic relationship between, uh, say, mussels and bacteria, um, or uh, as a, a specific type of uh, process, metabolism that's carried out by the bacterial cells, that we are generating sufficient materials that can sustain life. So this is another possibility for um, how we go from inorganic substances to organic molecules, uh, which we know is uh, critical to life. So what was sort of at the beginning, what was happening right at the start with each of these sorts of uh, processes? Is this a potential candidate for how life began? Well, it could be. 
Uh, and we're going to have a look at one more possibility uh, in our third video in this little series, and that's going to be on panspermia. But that's coming up next. Thanks for watching.